Hello everyone, today I finally bring you my long-awaited Deborah Lippman nail polish review and this review has been a long time coming because I talk about Deborah Lippman nail polishes a lot and I actually wear her nail polishes the most. When I'm not filming a tutorial that has a specific nail polish related to the collection, I generally wear Deborah Lippman nail polishes. And I actually feel that her nail polishes with or without a base coat or a top coat wear the best. So today we're going to go over all the colors that you see here on these two color wheels. This one unfortunately has been mutilated because I did make a couple errors while waiting for this particular nail wheel to dry. So I had to lose four nails on this particular wheel. So I do apologize for the mutilated look. I hope you can forgive it. But this one is nice and complete and beautiful so we'll start with this one. In my nail polish collection video that I posted last month, I talk about the base and the top coats that I use. Generally, I use my Deborah Lippman base coat, which is called the Ridge Filler, and that's because I have very rounded off, very ridged nails. And I don't like to buff my nails out too much because generally I don't have a lot of time and I can't really be bothered with buffing and grinding down to a perfect tee. So if you have the luxury of that kind of time, I'm really glad for you. But unfortunately I don't, so that's why this Deborah Lettman Ridge Filler is my ultimate lifesaver. This is actually more important to me than any other nail color that I could own. A lot of my Chanel nail polishes chip within the first week of wear. But with this Deborah Lettman base coat, I always get at least a couple extra days without any chips. So granted, this is expensive, but I highly recommend you invest in a base before you invest in any extra nail colors. Now, the Butter Base Coat, it's called the Flawless Base Coat, is what my friend uses. My best friend and I live together, so we share a lot of our nail care tools. I find, though, that the Butter Base Coat is best for those with flat nails and without any ridges. It's great for a smooth look, especially if you already have smooth nails, but if you have more problematic nails or nails that need a little bit more maintenance, the Ridge Filler is definitely the better option for you. However, though, my best friend, because she has such nicely smooth nails, she actually uses this as the only color on her nails and tops it with a sheer glitter coat like this one by Deborah Lippman. This one is called Diamonds and Pearls and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But on my color wheel I did swatch the two top coats. This one right here is the Butter and this one right here is the Deborah Lippman Ridge Filler. A paler beige nude whereas the base coat by Butter is more of a natural, very wearable beige that's more along the cool tone. Now here are swatches of the two top coats. This one is by Butter and this one is by Deborah Lippman. This is the one I have been using for the last several months. It's called Hardware by Butter London and I really love how thin and liquidy and easily it spreads. Plus the dry time is faster than any other top coat that I have ever tried. I really loved Sesh Feet, but I have found a new love in Deborah Lippman's Addicted to Speed top coat. And Flatiron Experts sent this to me because I had a lot of requests to review this particular top coat. It's ultra glossy, but it's really thick, and it feels like you're adding a jelly glossy finish to any nail color that you've applied. And as much as I love my Butter London hardware, and I'm going to finish it, I'm going to continue using this on my toes. On my nails from now on, even though it takes another 5-10 to 10 minutes for my nails to dry, I'm definitely going to be using Deborah Lippmann's Addicted to Speed. Here are two nails painted with the Deborah Lippmann color Naked. And this one is topped with, I believe, the Butter London. And this one, I believe, is topped with the Deborah Lippmann. But it's really not noticeable on a color wheel. It's not captured on camera. You have to see it in person. Alright then, since the nail care basics were taken care of, let's start with the colors, shall we? This one is called Like a Virgin. And yes, I know there's a barely noticeable difference between the translucent nail with the top coat here as opposed to this white. However, in the bottle, it doesn't look like a sheer white. It does look like an actual white. And this is in fact the greatest nail polish to use as a base for any glitter nail polish that doesn't have an opaque base. And I really didn't think I would like it at first, but actually I would wear it alone. And I never wear white polishes alone. But for some reason, maybe because it's a sheer creamy white color and not so much of a stark paint-like white, I do really like it even against my tan skin. Next we have Before He Cheats, which is an ultra sheer baby pink. It's actually a cool toned baby pink as you can see in the bottle with three 
full coats, I get really nice color and it's not so stark unlike Butter London's Teddy Girl, which is in the same way that I don't like chalky whites, is a very chalky pink against my nails. It's still very pretty and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a baby pink that's opaque and really shows up against your skin, but for a more neutral, conservative effect, for example if you work in an office, a very conservative one at that, this is probably the baby pink that I would recommend to you. Next we have I Dreamed You, which is the most gorgeous opalescent pink, and it's actually one of my favorite pinks of all time. I do believe this is probably one of my first five Deborah Lippmans, and I adore this one. I actually wear this a lot. Even though it's pearly, and it slightly reminds me of Chanel Jade Rose, this one is a true pink, and it's actually perfect in two coats. My reservations about this when I first purchased it were that it would be too sheer, it would be streaky, but it looks perfect on the nail, and it spreads really easily. Easily. This one comes highly recommended by me. Now we have Pretty Young Thing, and this one is actually very difficult to find. I was searching for it for a while, but Flatiron Experts thankfully had it in stock, so they sent it to me. And it's a very, very sheer peach. This is the sheerest Deborah Lippmann that I own, and probably for some people, a lot of you may not think this is worth the money because it requires at least three to four coats. In the bottle, it's the perfect coral pink. I just wish that it would translate that way on my nail in two coats. Next we have the nail polish that I was talking about. This is called Diamonds and Pearls. This is what my best friend layers over the Butter London base coat. And as you can see, it's very, very shimmery. It's actually coral, gold, and slightly green in shimmer with a very sheer base. And on this particular nail, I've applied PYT, or Pretty Young Thing, right here, and topped it with the Diamonds and Pearls as a top coat. It's pretty, it's young, it's feminine, and I really do like this color combination. This, by the way, is I Dreamed You with the glitter nail polish called Some Enchanted Evening. This is one of my favorite color combinations, and I used to wear this all the time. I just feel that Deborah Lippmann makes glitter nail polishes a lot more wearable for the 21 and up crowd. It's not embarrassing to have glitter on your nails. And of course, there are other factors involved, but I think overall, Deborah Lippmann does make the most wearable wearable glitter. Now I'm going to flip the color wheel and start talking about the nudes. So like I said, these were the base coats and right here are the two popular Deborah Lippmann nude. Now, one of these doesn't belong to me actually. My best friend owns Fashion, which is the darker one here. So that's it over here, Fashion. Really nice alternative to Particular if you thought Particular was too dark. I personally love Chanel Particular. And when I don't feel like wearing particular, I wear Deborah Lippmann's Naked, which I believe Lady Gaga made famous by wearing on the cover of a magazine. Naked is the perfect nude in my opinion, but my best friend, because her nail beds are a little larger, finds that Deborah Lippmann's fashion makes them look a little smaller. And I do agree, I think the effect is definitely more noticeable, as opposed to when she wears naked. So it's up to you, it depends on what kind of effect you're going for. If you want more of a mousy brown, then definitely stick to fashion. But if you want a true beigey nude, almost like what you would look for in a nude lipstick, definitely try Naked. Now here I have three nails swatched with the same color called Believe. And this color was created in conjunction with Cher, the singer. And here is Believe swatched alone. The next nail is topped with the Deborah Lippmann Addicted to Speed top coat. And the last one is topped with the Butter London top coat. On these nails, the difference is really imperceptible except when you touch the nail you can feel that this one has a thicker top coat on as opposed to the Butter London which feels a lot thinner. Now for the fun stuff. Let's get on with the color, shall we? So this is Some Enchanted Evening which I showed you before. This is Some Enchanted Evening on its own. I personally find that it's really pretty but I just feel that it looks much better with a pink base. Next we have Happy Birthday which is Deborah Lippmann's most popular, I believe, glitter nail polish. This is one coat, this is two coats. Again, it's really not that noticeable, it just depends on how much pressure you put on the nail. And especially with these glitter nail polishes, you want to sweep it across the nail the first time, and then in order to place the nail polish where you want it to go, you need to place and pat the brush on top of the nail in order to get the placement that you want. It does take a little bit of coaxing, but once you get the hang of it, 
it'll be easy peasy. Or you can just use, you know, a nail pin or any kind of wooden stick that you can find at CVS. I know it's a little frustrating at first because the glitter looks too clumpy in some spots and then you don't get any in another, but if you just move it around smoothly, it'll be fine. Now for Deborah Lippmann's holiday color in Stairway to Heaven. It's a beautiful icicle reminiscent nail polish and it has pearlescent glitters in it which are both hexagon and square shaped. I personally love it and it looks best when you top this over a color that's already apparent in the nail polish. So for example, I used a mint green nail polish which was Sally Hansen's gentle blossom underneath and it looked really beautiful because you can see there's a little bit of that slightly minty green shimmer. It would also work great with pinks and I also find that it would still look nice over like a virgin. And once again this is one coat and this is two coats. Next we have Glitter in the Air, which was released earlier this year, I believe, and this one was one of the most hotly anticipated nail shades of the year. Thankfully, Flatiron Experts sent this to me because I can no longer find it anywhere near me. And I have to say that I would never wear this alone. Even though it has a very sheer blue base, it just looks ugly against my nails. I just don't know how to explain it to you, and unfortunately I don't have swatch photos because I applied it and then took it off immediately. But some women can pull this off alone. I have seen swatches of it with just two layers or three layers and it looks great. Just not great against my nails. I personally think that it looks best with like a virgin. Or I would put it on top of Chanel Riva or Sephora's OPI collection the Havana Nights or Havana Dreams, I can never get it straight. And also one of my subscribers told me on Facebook that this adds texture to a lot of nail polishes. So I actually swatched it. And also one of my subscribers told me on Facebook that this adds texture to a lot of nail polishes. So I actually swatched it over, before he cheats, the really sheer pink that I told you about. And the reason I chose pink is because there's a pink glitter particle in this nail polish. But overall, I do think Glitter in the Air is worth investing in if you like really unique nail polish. Now we're almost done with the glitters. I saved Lady Sings the Blues in this packaging. I save all of the Deborah Lippmann boxes, actually. As you can see, this one was $18 at Nordstrom's. And as much as I like this, I really want to buy Across the Universe because I think that it looks better than Lady Sings the Blues. It's is one and a half coats. I put one thin layer on. Usually if I goop it on, uh, these nails are much larger than my actual nail. So I can use one coat, but for this one I had to use one and a half. It's super opaque and the blue base is ultra rich and inky, very dark and well pigmented. But overall I think if you're going to look for a dark blue nail polish, definitely pick up Across the Universe as opposed to Lady Sings the Blues. That is unless you want the glitter to be less apparent. Then you might want to stay with Lady Sings the Blues because as you can see, it's definitely not as noticeable as any of these glitter nail polishes. Next is one of my favorite Deborah Lippmann's and I think this might actually be the very first one that I purchased. It's called I Know What Boys Like. This was recommended to me by my Giorgio Armani sales associate, Elise and she loves this color. She was actually wearing it the second time I went in to see her after she introduced me to the Deborah Lippmann base coat and I love it. I think it's a really great periwinkle blue and it's not as dark as a navy so it doesn't look like a navy when it's on my nails. It doesn't look black. It actually looks a little brighter. It's a dark periwinkle and it's smooth, creamy and this is also one and a half coat. And last but not least I have Deborah Lippmann's Purple Rain and this one was created in collaboration with Zach Posen who is a designer and he makes the most beautiful dresses I have ever seen on the red carpet. They're just gorgeous and one day I hope to be able to buy myself one. <laughs> but since that's just a fantasy See, at least I can afford his nail polish with Deborah Lippmann, right? I did want to show though how streaky it is if you are not careful to apply it. Any kind of foiled nail polish like this does show brush strokes. I can't say necessarily that it's streaky, but the brush strokes do show and that does irritate me a little if they don't look smooth or straight. I put Believe right next to Even it. Even though Believe is of a similar foiled nature, it's not quite 
as obvious in showing brush strokes as is Purple Rain. And I almost forgot these two actually, the most important one because I'm actually wearing it on my nails today. This one is called Day Tripper and my friend Michael, the Sublime Agent, was so awesome for sending this color to me because I absolutely love it. It looks different in all sorts of lightings. Like right now, it looks more like a red or at least that's what it looks like on my viewfinder. But in the sunlight, it looks like a true corally. And that's the great thing about a lot of Deborah Lippman nail polishes. They are true to the color that you see in the bottle, which is very rare in other nail polishes. This is almost a week of wear on my nails right now, and there is a little bit of tip wear, but I did rub a couple things with acetone, and I did fix my toenails, so obviously the top coat wore down because I was touching acetone. But anyway, I think it still wears really well. It's one of my favorite nail polishes because it actually looks a little bit neon depending on what lighting you're in. I find that those nail polishes that look really nice in any kind of lighting are my favorite ones and that's why I love Day Tripper so much. So thank you Michael, I really love it. Last but not least is called Between the Sheets and I actually got this for free as a sample from one of the Nordstrom's beauty events and I actually really like it. This is one and a half coats so on my nail, my smaller much smaller as you can see, nails, it would be one coat and one coat would be enough. I really do like it. It's not a color that I would necessarily reach for often because I like really dark or really light colors or really bright ones like Day Tripper, but I think Between the Sheets is definitely a uh, raspberry color that I would wear on my toes probably. So this one I'm definitely going to use next on my feet to see how that works out. And I promise this is really the last one now. This is the Cuticle Remover by Deborah Lippman. This is an intensive nail treatment. And I don't know if you guys have seen any of my nail pictures on my blog, but I do have slightly raised cuticles. And I don't like to cut them because my cuticles become really dry and sensitive after someone cuts So I've been using the Deborah Lippman Cuticle Remover. And it comes with this little droplet here, but I actually brush it on straight to the nail in the base of the cuticle. It really softens them, and I use just a nail trimmer. It's by the brand called Trim, and I bought it at CVS. You just push the cuticle back, and then I wipe it down with a paper towel. So if you are looking for an effective way to remove your cuticles without having to cut them, I do highly recommend this. But anyway, I don't want to have to drag this video on longer than it's been dragging on. So I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any further questions or want to see more of these nail wheels, just go ahead and look onto my blog in the next couple days, and I'll have them posted, as well as a general review of all the colors and my favorite ones. As always, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!